Hey Steffen. Hey Dominic. What's the best way to create multilingual WordPress websites? Oh. Well, there are multiple approaches to creating a multilingual website, but most of them, or actually probably all of them, at the moment require um, external plugins. Right. This is currently the case, but uh, actually, like there is the Gutenberg project, right, where the block editor came from, and and so on, and it has like four phases. And in the we are currently starting the third phase, and in the fourth phase, the goal will be to have a multilingual experience or enable multilingual editing in WordPress core. And I'm really looking forward to that because currently the state of like multilingual plugins is a little bit complicated because it always also depends on what you want to do, right? So, um, and then if you go and look at the different plugins uh, there are, they all are um, good for certain types of translations. And uh, by that, I mean, um, you first need to consider what do you actually want to translate? Do you really only want to have like a one-to-one translation between like menu items and post content where you translate like first the the headline then like the first paragraph the second paragraph and so on and everything is like one to one then um, there are plugins that do that these are the most basic plugins because they don't really need to change a lot in WordPress in, in the normal structure of the WordPress database for example because you can just say okay uh, instead of the normal content, um, I have a meta field um, that uh, stores this translation of the content. And then um, depending on how many languages you have, this of course can get quite complicated UI-wise because you then have to say, like you have to have one field for every language in like one big editor and so on. So this is like the first way uh, to to do that. If on the other hand, you want to have more flexibility between translations. So let's say you might have like posts that either get translated or they don't get translated. And if they get translated, there's not like a one-to-one translation, but you maybe want to, like in in our case with the component-based approach, have the components in a slightly different order, maybe have different, totally different content and so on. And in that case, um, there are different plugins. And this is usually the way that we do uh, things because We've uh, um, noticed that for the clients, this most of the time offers the best editing experience. We use the plugin WPML uh, for that. And there you basically, they create extra tables in WordPress to do the linking between posts, right? So you have uh, different posts and um, these are regular posts in WordPress or of, of this post type, but, but then you also have like, um, language metadata for that. So these are uh, have completely different post IDs, but they are mapped via custom tables uh, so that you know that it, it's a translation. But of course, this also means that um, WPML actually hooks into a lot of the internal WordPress functionality because like fetching posts and so on always has to be filtered by the language or like uh, other language specific metadata that you want to search for. So um, this is usually how we do things and what we usually advise for, for most people to get the best editing experience. And then there are also uh, plugins that uh, don't add any extra tables, but they use the WordPress uh, multi-site concept in order to have one uh, multi-site um, or like one block instance for one language. And then they, they link these together in like uh, some extra metadata where you can get a similar experience to like having uh, this more integrated approach, but um, it's more clearly uh, separated, right? And there is like the, the I think the most famous uh, plugin that does that is like a multilingual press uh, from like the German company that uh, has specialized in, in these kind of uh, systems. But again, I've talked about two things that you might want to do. So either translate like only little pieces, like one by one, or translate entirely 
uh, like different uh, uh, content for though the same kind of objects so to say so that you maybe like have the same page structure right so you have the same menu and, and so on but then you translate the the posts or the pages individually so that that they can have different content but then there's also another difference another different approach that you might have and this is like um, having different markets right which isn't really a translation uh, issue but it, this is more for me like this multi-site approach so let's say you are a company that operates in in different markets and you have a, a german website and a british website and there you might have like completely different content right different menus uh, different legal requirements that you have on the website and so on and maybe like even different also different plugins that you use or, or something like that and um, for that, I would always suggest to use a multi-site to have like a, a one multi-site uh, instance or like a block for uh, one market. And then again, like also these uh, markets can can potentially be translated, right? So for example, if, if we talk about Switzerland or like Canada, there are multiple official languages in these countries where you might have a market and then translations for that. So that's why like in, in some cases, we have also done a combination of multi-site plus multilingual with WPML, um, where things then get, of course, a little bit complicated again. And you can also use like these multi-site based multilingual plugins to do that. But then it's a little bit hard to to keep the overview, like what kind of multi-site is a market, what is a different language for a market, how do, does, do these things fit together and so on. So yeah, now I've talked a lot <laughs> about <laughs> how you can create something. So what is what is the best way? And again, like it totally depends on, on what you want. And I think that's why I'm really looking forward to the Gutenberg, uh, uh, Gutenberg phase four uh, to be completed because we keep having like, although we think for our clients and for what we do, uh, WPML is like the best approach. We constantly run into issues with WPML because it's so tightly integrated into WordPress. And when you want to customize things and even when you don't want to customize things even when you have like different plugins that don't not play well together with wpml you you will run into issues so yeah did i cover that like does, does, does that answer or do you have any any more questions with regards to that Stefan? i think i'm fine thanks <laughs>